That signal, of course, means one o'clock. And when it's one o'clock here in Boston, it means it's about, I don't know, four in the afternoon somewhere, I guess. <laughs> yeah. As I was saying, this little phrase is something I always like to read in moments of great despair, uh, such as today. I've been paid. And uh, I always read this little phrase to myself, and it reassures me. I had brought nothing away from the college but a hatred of books. That little thought uh, always does something to me. I don't know what it is. Uh, incidentally, friends, this, of course, is... This period, this half-hour period, is uh, purchased by me in the interests of my candidacy for president of Standard Oil. Uh, as I've said before, I promise to make nice gasoline and swell petroleum products and do everything just nifty. Uh, but I have to have the support of you stockholders. So get behind me 100%, and I'll be very grateful. I'll only keep the job 10 or 15 years, and I promise to get out then. Is that clear? Well, uh, let me see. Oh, I want to mention something before I forget it, that Betty Ann Groves, who is a television star, uh, will be at the casino at Magnolia uh, tonight and tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And uh, I happen to be talking to Mr. Eisen, who, as you all know, studied under the great Carl Snagelfruger for a good many years. And uh, Sammy uh, is now a very accomplished musician, and an orchestra leader of great note. And uh, he and his band uh, is or are appearing, albeit singular, uh, at the delightful casino at Magnolia. I was in uh, telephonic communication with Mr. Eisen just a few moments ago, and my ear is still ringing. He has a very loud voice on the phone, and somebody should speak to him about it. But I'm glad to be with you all, friends, and we've had more entries and stuff and things uh, on what's funny. And I even have a card here with a piece of, he says, a piece of a $10 bill. And uh, it looks to me like a piece of a $1 bill. Though. I don't think he'd send me that a $10 bill. And it's, it's he, I'm sorry, it's Kay Linehan. I'm awfully sorry, Kay. 100 Mount Vernon Street in West Roxbury. And uh, she says, uh, Dear Ray, I'm sending the attached... $10 bill to put my name on your mailing list with the suggestion that a barrel of the same would eliminate the need of any further contest. And I think she's absolutely right. 100% right. Oh, gee. Life is such a problem. I'm looking at some pictures here. Well, they're not really pictures. They're great art studies by Salvador Dali. There's a whole flock of them in this particular book. It's amazing. Uh... The way that fellow can, I don't know what you say, draw. But what he can do with a, with a pencil and a piece of paper is right out of this world. Really amazing. What he's done is uh, he has drawn the illustrations for a, a book of essays. And it's very impressive indeed. It makes me think that I'm pretty good upstairs. Speaking of upstairs, I hope all you people who live downstairs are keeping your radios up real loud so as to bother the people upstairs. Always do that, friends, as you go through life. Dear Ray, what would be funnier than a barrel full of Cynthia Sweets chocolates with Ipana filling? Uh, this is really quite practical, because not only will you enjoy a delicious candy, but you will clean your teeth at the same time, thus revolutionizing the candy and toothpaste industries. Most sincerely, Marjorie Allen. <coughs> well, Marge, I think that's wonderful, and I'm going to send you some Cynthia Sweets filled with Ipana toothpaste, and I know that you will like them, as so many people do. Have you seen the new movie? Uh, it's called uh, uh, Young Love, and it's starring uh, Margaret O'Brien as a two-fisted prep school athlete uh, who has a knack for getting in trouble. And that will be opening at Murphy's Open Air Theater in Back Pasture, New Hampshire, someday soon. I think tomorrow, one of those days. Any more mail here? Yes, one other. One other that I'll read now, that is. <clears throat> I can't read all of it either, though. Let me see. A barrel with Harry Truman and Drew Pearson inside. Well, that's kind of funny. That's from Nancy Sheehan of Brookline. 
Walcott Road, and I think uh, Nancy will send... I can't read your whole letter. And uh, Nancy wrote in pencil, which offended me. And I'll, I'll send her some candy, but uh, I wouldn't do it again. Now, you'll just have to use uh, pen and ink if you're going to write into this program, because after all, if I have to show these letters to people, think how embarrassed I feel showing them a letter written to me in pencil. Goodness sakes. What could be funnier than a barrel full of pass books? And that is submitted by Ernestine A. Mulcairn of Cambridge. And I laughed at that myself. I don't know whether you laughed, so I'm going to send Ernestine a box of Cynthia Sweet's chocolates. Somebody wrote in and said we're not singing after the Chesterfield commercial anymore. Well, I'll tell you why why we're not. It's because uh, the musicians I have on the program this week can't play that song. They have to have music. Now, that's where they differ from Ken and Bill. Ken and Bill fake, you see. They can fake it. And uh, these three men are great musicians and wouldn't dare fake. So that's why we're not having uh, singing after the Chesterfield commercial. I may hum a little bit after today's commercial, which is coming up right now, as a matter of fact. Chesterfield over and over again. Chesterfield satisfy women and men. Milder, much milder, all smokers agree. Always by Chesterfield A, B, C. A, B, C, A, B, C, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, that's a pretty song. Somebody wrote to me, somebody from Lowell wrote and said that when they, uh, that, that particular singing commercial is on the air. They're two or three year old, or maybe she's a little older, I forget. Uh, listen to the radio and say, uh, Hobby Horses. It, it reminds the, the little girl of music they play at Hobby Horses. I guess it does at that. Da -da -da -da. They always play something like that. Here's a card I'm going to read. This is also from Lowell. And can you imagine the time that this fellow spent with a dictionary in his hand? Now, you listen to this whole card. It's from John Thornley. 424 Chemsford Street in Lowell. He says, uh, gentlemen, that almost threw this entry out right there. Uh, I had to go to the judges with that, and they consented to let it go by just this once, however. What could be funnier than ants uh, in the pants of a paper hanger? Well, that's pretty funny. Uh, being a regular and truly appreciative listener to your value WHDH program and being thereby fully conservant, of the abundant volume of hot air thus disseminated, I would suggest you install the atmospheric air purification potentialities the 1949 Philco air conditioner embraces, unless perchance you refer to conserve all the heat or prefer to conserve all the heat to solve next winter's heating perplexities. Your matinee offering certainly constitutes a sure cooler offer, for it invariably puts the heat on. Thus, when it evaporates, the humidity assumes cooler proportions by mere comparison. And he wrote a, a ditty for, uh, for uh, Cynthia Sweets. He said, Cynthia Sweets lead the candy parade, the sweetest and purest that ever were made. Thus, when your flavor and their flavor melts on your lips, all competition fades into total eclipse. Beautiful words sung now by Larry Lovebreath. It's awful good, John Thornley. Yeah, it's very good. I'll have to send you some candy. But speaking of that Philco air conditioner, I'm a hay fever sufferer. And I imagine there are plenty of others who suffer from it. You know, this Philco air conditioner just doesn't cool your room, but it purifies the air. In other words, it takes out the sturdilies that fly around causing people to suffer from hay fever. Now, if you do suffer from uh, hay fever or grass fever or dust fever, and there are some, you know, the people are allergic to a lot of things like that that you never realize. Uh, this Philco will clear the air before you breathe it, which isn't a bad idea. I always recommend clean air to breathe. So uh, if, if you would care to have them go out and look at your house, don't forget to send me a postcard here, up here at this swell little room, and I'll read it and send the fellows out to your house. You don't have to buy anything. They'll just tell you what you should buy if you need it. Barbara Colby of... Par uh, let me see. It must be Belmont. I'll have to look. No, it isn't. I don't know where it is. Something in Massachusetts, Barbara. And she says, what could be funnier than a barrel full of 50,000 watts? W-A-R-T-S. Well, I think that's pretty funny, and I'll send you some candy, Barbara, but I hope it gets to you. I think it's Belmont. I'll let them figure it out over at Cynthia Sweets. 
Gee, I only have three commercials today, which comes as a pretty nasty shock. Uh, I wish I had about 15. As somebody wrote in, Duke wrote in and told me, uh, you, you need all those commercials uh, to talk about. Well, I sure do, and for other reasons, too. Meanwhile, let's turn to our men of music. See, I knew you were listening anyway. Hey, see how I caught him that time? Okay, man. Thank you, man. That was our hungry trio who are substituting for Ken and Bill while on vacation. And in connection with that, there's a letter from Wollaston that says, uh, Who do you think you're kidding, Ray? You haven't three new musicians. That's Ken and Bill still supplying the music. How did it get? I thought I was getting away with something. But here's a, here's a person in Wollaston who knows that that's still Ken and Bill playing the music. And she has the proof right here in the letter. Well... It isn't really, honest. Uh, it isn't. It's from the Kilbourne twins, Nancy and Midge. That really isn't Ken and Bill. As I say, uh, Ken and Bill are on vacation. Really, they are, and that's a substitute. And the mail pool is still all for Ken and Bill, unfortunately. Looks like they'll be back Monday, according to our survey. Well, there's nothing I can do about it. I mean, I have to abide by the decision of the judges. Remember, it's final, and uh, everyone's been very original and very apt about the whole thing. And uh, so, unfortunately, Ken and Bill will be back. I, I Incidentally, I bumped into Ken Wilson this morning, but not hot enough. He didn't fall down over in front of the Charmant Bank. <clears throat> Isn't that funny when you're on vacation, you always skulk around banks looking in, looking at winking green backs. Usually, uh, towards the end of your vacation, you do that. But Ken was over there this morning, walking up and down in front of the Charmant Bank, uh, looking in with big, greedy eyes. You could knock his eyes off with a stick looking into the uh, telescope. Excuse me, a bulletin. 
What's that? Well, he owns a big house out in Jamaica Plain, you know. Come in. <laughs> Time to do it right on his sure. vacation. Your mortgage, Mr. Uh, Bounty, Mr. Wilson, want to talk with you. Yeah? Well, won't take very long. Well, I'm on vacation, though. All you'll have to do is sign this piece of paper, sir. Well, couldn't I do it in a couple of weeks? Uh, no, it's essential I have this thing done by five. Because you have to be out by noon tomorrow, you see what I mean? <laughs> well, anyway, a very up. happy vacation to Ken. Hey, I'm looking at these drawings of Salvador Dali, and they scare me, Leo. By whom? Salvador Dali. You know. Oh, I, I can't stand it. You can't, really? No, I, I really don't like it. He scares me. I don't he's scare much too easily. grotesque. What's that there? Well, this thing with the moon growing and, and somebody's uh, chest and he has uh, horns coming out of their arms mm. and all kinds of scary things like that. I get all scared when I look at Salvador Dali. Why does he do that? There must be some reason for it. But he, he you know, uh, incidentally, Salvador Dali does all right. I mean, he's world famous and some of his drawings... Well, I suppose. People how how can you enjoy his drawings? I mean, actually... Well, if you know what he's trying to do, I suppose. I mean, just the, the, the ordinary layman. How can you enjoy anything so uh, so unusual, so out of this world? Well, if you can say nothing more for Salvador Dali, you don't pass over his work without looking at it. No, I'll, I'll admit that. It, it Which does is something you. that you can't say about all hey. artists. You'll stop Is this an at open it. forum? May I speak? Yes, really? it certainly is, Leo. It's been Which type out. of art do you care for most, Ray? Now, you're, you're oh, not an artist, but... Uh, petty, I guess. I mean... Petty, I think. No, I mean outside of magazines. I mean, I really mean it. Uh, I'm serious. Well, all right. I think I like the American primitive. Uh, the way the Indians used to draw. <laughs> now, don't don't you like New, Eng New England landscape drawing or, or a nice big... Uh, uh, sunset? Uh, no, not a sunset. A, a water picture. No. Uh... Not necessarily. Seashore, rocks and cliffs up on the on the main coast. And a big, uh, splashy marine. Well, if there's a petty That's... girl in it, sure. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah, sure, I like that. Yeah, very Sitting much. on a rock, you mean. Sure, well, I'd like... <laughs> oh, yes. It would like have that. to be on the near horizon, not the far horizon. Too. Oh, very, very close. Right up near. Well, there's nothing that pleases me more than a big uh, ocean scene. With a, with a big schooner. With a schooner. Mm -hmm. uh, and full, right up to the top. Listing Leeward, Leo... A big schooner, a big copper schooner. <laughs> a growler. Sure. Well, what do you know about that? So you like seashore scenes? Yes, I do. Which, incidentally, friends, is a mouthful. <laughs> Try that sometime. Seashore scenes. It's very tricky, and only that I have some swell pivot teeth, I'd be still spinning. Albeit singular. Uh, what you, you say you like that kind of drawing. Drawing, uh, yes. Uh -huh. That's my favorite type drawing. Well, uh, <clears throat> tell me, Leo, do you like impressionist or impressionist? No, I, I do not care for the modern art. You don't really? No, I, I mean, don't believe it. It doesn't do anything for me. Take Winnie Churchill. Now, he does a lot of impressionistic stuff. Uh, do you like it? No. I mean, uh, he'll put a, a big blob of brown or a little blob of brown way up in the right-hand corner, and uh, the story with the picture goes that that fellow is reading some book, you see. And you have to just visualize the whole thing. And a big blob of green, of course, is a tree or a lake, depending on his whim. Have you ever seen a, uh, a winter scene in New England, a little brook that isn't quite frozen over in the oh. snow, and a, uh, a white uh, birch tree? This birch guy, trees are white, aren't they? This guy has I mean, the that's soul real of a art. That, that really is. Leo, you have the soul of a poet, right? Really. Well, it, it's simply that some of my uh, relatives are artists, and that's the type of work they... I honestly, you, know, you, you, I, you. We you. have a house full at home. You must come over and see them sometimes. Of drawings and so forth. Yes, New well, England, countryside, cover, covered bridges. It's wonderful. Wow, it sounds real great to me. I, as I say, <coughs> I have a whole flock of Esquire pictures. I'll be glad to exchange or show you, Leo. Might as well make this a fair. I mean, two for one. Sure. Okay. <coughs> uh, what are you doing this evening, Leo? This evening, uh, we're doing a ball game at Bracefield. Oh, well, then you can't go out to the casino, then, can you? Well, I could drop out there for the early dinner. Well, swell. You, you I folks, won't be able to dance under the stars. For though. those of you who are listening who aren't baseball announcers, maybe you can make it then. Uh, isn't it a wonderful night to go out for dinner? And I, and I know just the spot, too. You put down the top or you open the windows in the car and uh, head for the casino at Magnolia. It's the kind of a drive that really sets you up for a glorious evening. 
out along the beautiful North Shore, out through Cohasset and Hingham, out through that way, uh, to, <laughs> from Salem to Magnolia with a view of Gloucester Harbor when you arrive. Then uh, stroll in and be big time about it. I mean, slam the door shut and walk right in as though you know what you're doing and walk as though you have a wallet full of money. Stand there with your hands on your hips and say, come on now. Sure. Just, Action. Just march in there and I am. slam the door, let everyone know you're there, and you can have a, uh, a cocktail at the bar, order dinner if you wish, and uh, you can have a delicious meal, all for a dollar eighty-five. A meal for a dollar eighty-five. Now that isn't bad, you must agree. You can dance where the cool ocean breezes join you. There's music. I'll say there's music. Sammy Eisen, who, as I said before, studied under the great Carl Snagelfruger uh, for a great many years, is furnishing music at the casino at Magnolia. And tonight, Betty Ann Groves, the singing star, will be there to sing your favorite melodies. A brown bird singing for one. I don't know what some of the others are. <laughs> Incidentally, I heard singing Sam the other morning. You did? And he's, he's the late singing Sam, don't you? Is he? Isn't he late? Well, I don't know. I maybe maybe these are transcribed. Yes, I think they are his old, old... Well, I think it has been two singing Sam <clears throat> and Leo. I really Well, do. maybe I'm wrong about it, Ray. I hope so. Mm. I've always enjoyed old Sam. Mm -hmm. You've been a wonderful, wonderful singer. Well, anyway, he sang a brown bird singing. And uh, it was a beautiful morning for it, and my eyes filled up with tears as I listened to it. It's a great old song. I used to love the way Henry Burr sang it. Well, and that was... will be one of the featured songs at Magnolia tonight? That will. That's what Betty Ann has promised to sing for me. Well, and I shall have to have a substitute on that ball game. I must go there tonight. One more thing. Between dances, uh, be sure and buy some more dance checks. Oh, no, no. Uh, be sure to stroll the grounds, watch the ocean, bathe in the moonlight. You'll even enjoy the check, friends. There's never a cover. All the prices are reasonable. And remember, the casino at Magnolia is open for luncheon, too, as well as dining and dancing every single night. Sunday dinner all day, too. So whenever you want a good time, be smart. Look smart. Feel smart. Go to the casino at Magnolia and shave, too. Now here are our men of music.
powerful music, fellas. Just think you only have one more day to go, and then, according to the mail count, you'll be gone for good. Maybe I can get you in on some program like Songs of All Nations or something. That's something I'll work on later, and I want you to drop up to my office after today's program. What is funnier than uh, a groom with tight shoes in a receiving line? That's pretty funny, isn't it, Leo? Yeah, that's funny. I think groom with tight shoes. Or the bugler at Wonderland with a split lip. <laughs> <laughs> that's sent in by Sad Sam, the undertaker's aide. And uh, he says that if these are funny, we should send a box of chocolates to the children's hospital, which will be done. Thank you, Sad Sam. That was a very nice thought indeed. What would be funnier than a barrel full of sponsors picking up their uh, options? That would be a laugh, Leo. Mm-hmm. And I'll send you some. Especially in too. the summer. <laughs> I think a barrel of spaghetti is funnier than a barrel of monkeys, and besides, it would give Mary uh, Margaret Magoon a chance to use her noodle. That's from Cap de Rochemont. That doesn't sound like a, a, a pirate's name. Doesn't it look like a swashbuckling pirate? Incidentally... Uh, don't forget to see the swashbuckling pirate story starring Spring Byington, which will open soon. Uh, Margaret O'Brien uh, is in the movie. She, as I said before, is a two-fisted athlete at prep school who has a knack for getting into trouble, and it's filmed in off-color, and you love it. Swell. And that'll be opening up at some outdoor theater. It has to be shown on the outdoors. Uh, now it's time for that split-lip bugler. says, for a big Friday evening of fun and speed, see tonight's Greyhound races at Wonderland Revere, America's most beautiful Greyhound track. You'll see the champions in action in ten great races with the featured knights bringing to post... That's the kind of drawing I like. Is that? Bringing to post Alice Oaks, Welcome Stranger, Rural Streak, here are the 130 headlines, Full Steam, Alexis, Charlie Chap, Never Sunny, and Katuza. Post time, first race, 7.45. Now the weather. Daily double closes at 7.30. Uh, Revere is near, from Boston, by MTA, from Maverick Station, from everywhere, over wide highways, on the WHDH scoreboard. Two big floodlighted free parking lots are provided for those who drive. See the big Friday night racing show tonight at Wonderland. And bring the ladies with you. <laughs> They'll enjoy greyhound racing, and they'll thrill to Wonderland's beautiful gardens that are now smelling. So be sure to be there. They smell good. If you go there, friends, you'll feel good again. Well, so much for Wonderland, and so much for all the commercials. I think that is it for the day. Yes, it is. And it's been wonderful having you here, friends, uh, this afternoon as we've talked about art. And, uh, what else? I guess that's about all. Tomorrow we'll discuss some other subject that's on everyone's lips. How about the evolution of Bebop? What's that again? How about evolution of Bebop tomorrow? All right, we'll try to have him up here, too. That's a very good suggestion. He's in town. I understand so, yes. And uh, if it's at all possible for us to get him, we will have him up on this program first, I might add. Naturally. Uh, 50,000 warts, they're always anxious to get here. I, uh, I've made that little rule to myself. Well, that does it. I want to thank you for dropping in. You've been wonderful spring. And, uh... Thank you. I want to tell you that I've always enjoyed your movies, particularly the one where you got hung in the first reel. I laughed at that one. I thought that was real funny. Until tomorrow, then, I hope you will tune in again. This is handsome, pert, dapper, uh, wealthy, personable, likable, successful, capable... And waiting for today's check. Waiting for the check. Ray Goulding saying, thanks for listening, folks. And write to me if you get work. And one other thing, please, always, as you go through life, think of this little thought. Hang by your thumbs. And a straight line is the shortest distance between two points, really. Bye. Oh, uh, one other thing. Uh, WHDH in Boston. (laughs)